which is I need to get I need to get on that, which I will. You will. I you will. Can he said he will. You're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. There's no there's no sense or buts, huh? What's good, gang? How are we doing today? My name is Dylan Dalton, and welcome back to episode number nine of Chilling with Dylan. This one, we have another guest on. His name is Atlas. He's a fellow YouTube friend of mine. I met him probably a year, year and a half ago. I'm very curious about his insight in the YouTube community and everything he does. We share similar interests, and it was a good conversation. Be sure to check out Atlas down below. I'll plug his YouTube and his Instagram. And while you're down there, hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. I wrote down a list of things. Sorry, this is uh, this is new to me. I haven't exactly. No worries. You're dude. my second guest. You're my Let's second go. guest, right? I saw you made one, a podcast. Yeah, I um, I have my own podcast that I do on Mondays with the community, where I just hop on stream and we talk about whatever topics they really want to bring into the conversation. And then I have one with a friend Leo from Texas, where we talk about like film, TV kind of the new nerdy news stuff right wait that's okay that, that's that's the move that's what i'd want to do and I, i'm curious yeah. about that do you have is that like another room a separate room no same room same room huh same room dang what I'm same room. Back. and i know I'm not, <laughs> i don't want to get too deep but like what do, what do you do for yeah, work as deep as you want man uh so i do youtube right. and then the other thing is i work with my father he has a construction company oh. so i work with him doing some uh supervising and stuff like that oh that's dope yeah okay. and how old are you 27 27 how old do you think i am probably 20 20 21 21 yeah 21 let's go that's cool i'm, I'm pretty good at that <laughs> yeah, you're, good. you're good with it for sure i was just curious yeah because i see the just like you the setup for you, right? Is just nice. So I assume you probably did some, some good. You know what I mean? A good job somewhere. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, I mean, a lot of it has just been. Uh, I like to invest in what I'm doing and in myself. Right. So whether that's stuff that makes me happy, like this, seeing this spring, you know, makes me happy, and upgrading my setup. So that's usually where my first investments go. I'm not someone that like likes to go out or right. Go out to dinner and blow money on weekends. So That's I good. really use my money. Try to use it at least efficiently. Right. I, I just barely got into that. I've had a PC for three years now and literally have never actually cared about it. Like I've cared about it, but not mm. cared about upgrading. And I just barely mm. started. So I don't know. Yeah. Right. I haven't done any upgrades to my PC yet. I want to in the future, but yeah. you know how it is, man. Shit's oh, yeah. expensive. <laughs> Hell expensive. Hell expensive. <laughs> yeah. How was that trip you went on? Great, man. I went to Columbia. I have... um. So all of my mom's family is from Columbia. Well, my father's as well, but they moved to the States oh. 30 years ago. So my mom's whole family is over there. And one of my cousins has lived, that lives here had a wedding over there to so, bring all the family together. So, so are you Colombian? Yes. That's Born cool. in the States, but that's... Okay, yeah. that's cool. You have, you, I guess you probably don't have dual citizenship. If you did, that'd be dope. No, no, no but after the trip, they kept telling me that I should do it. So I, I might do sick. it. That'd be super sick. Yeah, that'd be way dope. I wish. Yeah, I had my that. father has it. My mom have it. It's right. pretty cool. That's dope. Cool. I don't know. Have you ever traveled outside the states? I have not. I want. I'm going to Africa in May though. Ooh, yeah. where? It's a school trip. It's like you can get seven credits for it. Did you go to college? Um, I did two years. Two years. I got one more year left, and um, it's like a, you get seven credits for going. You go with a bunch of classmates. It's called Eswatini. It's a little small village. But you get to go on mm. safaris. You get to do one of the classes is oh. photojournalism, I think. And it's like for three or four weeks, but I'm down. You know what I mean? I never left the States before, so why not, right? No, that's, I think that's amazing. I try to tell people as often as I can that if you're looking to broaden your perspective, you got to travel, man. Oh, yeah. You got to travel. You got to see how other people live, the conditions, the food, the culture, music. It, right. it all gives you such a different idea of life in general. So. Right. I'm happy to hear that you can travel. It's dope. I can't wait. I got to get that passport first, but. I'm yeah, yeah, that's. It. Make sure you do that quick because that process is long, dude, right. and painful. I bet. I bet it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. The farthest I've been is New York, and I'm from Utah. Oh, okay. So I guess oh, okay. it's pretty far, right? Yeah, but, no, that's pretty far. Yeah. yeah. Where are you from? You don't have to say if you don't want to. I'm just curious. Uh, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah, about like uh, 25 minutes outside of the city of Boston. Oh, damn. That's dope. I want to go to Boston yeah. so bad. It's great, man. It's great. That's sick. It is cool. 
I hear um I like I, I like the Patriots a lot. I don't watch anymore, yes, but I got a jersey on my wall of Brady. But nice. Yes, there you sir. go. There you go. My water cup. Nice. Through and through, man. Oh, yeah. Especially being here and growing up here, it's I bet. I mean, of course, I grew up in peak Brady and Patriots, but it's just such a sports town, I uh, bet. professional sports town. Not really that much college, but you know, Celtics, Sox, Bruins, Pats. Which is dope. So, Have yeah. you ever gone to a game? Sure. Yeah, I'm actually going to a Celtics game tomorrow, funny enough. Oh, damn. I've been to one Pats game, multiple Sox games, and like three or four Bruins games. Cool. That's yeah. dope. I never been to. I, I went to a Mets game in New York. That's the only game I've been to. But oh, ever anything else? I don't even sure they have a nice stadium, right? They do have a nice yeah. stadium. Very nice. Yeah, I'm not a big baseball. Doesn't really do it for me. But being in the park, it's a great time. The scenery, food, it's, it's a vibe. Right, it is a vibe. That's all I'm gonna say. But I can't do four hours a night of baseball. Hell no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Can't> <laughs> way too that. long, dude. I agree it's with just, that. It's one of those sports that just hasn't really evolved at all. Yeah. And still, hasn't really like met up to kind of how we consume things. It's just, it's too slow for me. Yeah. I agree with that. And it's, I don't know. I just don't, like, I enjoy um, like the Super Bowl, right? I'll watch football sometimes, but not my, all my brothers play football, but I just don't care, honestly. Mm. I, I just don't see how people can enjoy it thoroughly all the time, but everyone mm. teach their own, I guess, right? So, That's what's your me. thing? Uh, Did you grow up playing any sports or anything like that? Played soccer in sixth grade. That's it. Nice. That's it. Nice. Yeah, that's about it. I, I, I've been going to the gym now, so I guess that's kind of physical activity, right? But that's about it. And you started your YouTube channel through gaming, right? So was that like mainly your focus growing up? Mainly, gaming yeah. And, it was right yeah. after I graduated high school. So I was 18 and I'm 21. Gotcha. And now I've kind of like fallen off a little bit, which is kind of why I wanted to be on the podcast, because I wanted to hear your point of view on it, right? Mm. Because when I did it, I uh, it was right when COVID hit. I think you started in mm. COVID too, right? Yeah, I did. That's um, but I was doing the whole playing Fortnite. If they subscribe, they could play with me. That became mm. a consistent thing. So people were like watching me strictly only for that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They didn't actually care about me, mm -hmm. and that led me to like be burnt down. I haven't done exotic store the hat, right? but I haven't done yeah. exotic in like over a year. And so I'm just mm. curious about that because I think if I came back and tried new things and try to just be myself with it. I'd enjoy it again, but I'm just curious how you have still stuck with it. If that makes sense. Like I, I used to always get discouraged by viewer count and like <clears throat> subscriber count, Yeah, I guess it's, I mean, for me to really give you the best context, I'd have to kind of go back a little bit. Cause I started in my first real, like, uh, entertainment endeavor was through music Oh, and music is, if anyone who's listening has been in the music industry, it's very difficult right. and um, super oversaturated, right? Everyone's making music. Everyone's thinking that they're the best rapper or hip-hop artist because I was in the hip-hop scene, oh. producer and engineer. Yeah. So I, I would say that through the years, I got accustomed th to the difficulties and the struggles of trying to get views and trying to get people to listen and constantly trying to market yourself. So there was kind of a point where I got used to not paying attention to the outcome uh -huh. and just being enveloped in the process. So when I switched to gaming, it was much easier for me than music to be able to make and create and not worry about the outcome and what was happening. And I felt like if I could keep that focus, that's what would bring me success because when you're paying attention to the numbers, you're paying attention to the views, the response, yeah. It's just, it's not going to go well either way. Right. Because if you're getting millions of views and you get too caught up, your mound is clouded by your excitement or your pride for what you've been able to accomplish. And right. then if your numbers are really bad, then you get discouraged and you're super insecure. Yeah. So either way, it kind of alters your focus. Yeah. So I try not to pay attention to either. That's and I good. feel like if I can do that, I can keep doing what I'm doing and then count on me and who I am to lead me to be successful, if that makes sense. Which is what I admire, because you, you really are just you authentically, which is dope. Like Thank I you, wish bro. I wish I would have started that, like doing that. I don't know. I just became like a character, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I, I I don't blame you. And I made the same mistakes through music and stuff like that and changing my identity. And especially in those years, like you're still trying to find yourself. So you're not sure what parts of yourself you really 
um, want to embrace or want people to know, or you, you're not even that consistent yet, you know, in your personality, you're still yeah. trying to find out who you are and like, am I the social person? Am I this? Am I that? So right. it's just time, you know? And I think that for a lot of people, they don't think about the long-term journey. They're like, I want it now. And if I don't get it now, then I'm not happy. And I see that the most successful people cut through by being consistent and being there for a long period of time. Right. And I feel like that's what I have against everyone else is that when you'll quit in a year, I won't. Right. And eventually that's just going to give me an advantage. I like that statement. That was good. Thank you. That's That's powerful. That's cool. I didn't know you made music. Yes. You still do it or no? For 10 years. 10 years. No. So when I transitioned to gaming, that was kind of, there's like a, a long story as to what happened when I transitioned. Uh-huh. It didn't really end that well for me, positively. There was um, a pretty drastic and kind of dark downfall for music. And Ooh. that's kind of where I was able to transition to, music, uh, to gaming. Right. Was um, just like that next evolution of entertainment or thing that I wanted to pursue, I guess you could say. Right. That's cool. How, did you just like you were you were just a producer engineer or you also like rapped producer engineer okay. i worked closely with uh a rapper oh, so cool. yeah so we would work on music together i'd produce he'd rap we'd both mix and master and then release the music and we worked together for like maybe six or seven years maybe yeah. a little bit less and and yeah and then the relationship kind of uh didn't really go in a great way and things right. kind of fell apart so that's kind of where the disconnect came and then from there um music kind of just left a, a weird taste in my mouth that i needed a break from so will i go back to in the future no idea right. but for now this has been my my mission that's dope that's cool yeah. and that's i don't know I, that's another thing i've learned is like i guess i, I know i want to do youtube you know what i mean like a pivot, like you pivoted from music to entertainment, it's still entertainment, right. but gaming. I just don't, I never had that, like that shtick, like you with, mm. with your stream, you'll, you'll play the game, but it's just you, you know, but like, I've never had something to create content around. I've had to like mm. rely on myself, I guess. Like I know other people who make YouTube videos, like my friends in real life, one of them skateboards, one of them plays a piano. Like they have that thing to make YouTube videos about, you know, mm-hmm. but like I ne- I've never had that, if that makes sense. I don't know. Yeah, well, I think experimenting is a great way to find it right? and just lean into things that you're passionate about. And I think this is great for you that you're doing this. I'm happy that you're doing this. I think you also have a great voice for doing podcasting. You're welcome. I appreciate that. So, you know, I, I think it's just experimenting. Do this for a little bit, see how you feel, and then it's not it. You'll know. Right. And it was kind of weird too, because this semester I was in a class for, it's called audio, it's just audio production. You learn about audio mm. and um, you have to be on the radio. We have like a radio at the school. And so I did a podcast with someone on the radio for this channel. And like, it was dope because I had a mic like yours. You know what I mean? I want one of those one yeah. day, but I don't have one yet. And like, I had the whole, it was live too. And it was weird. That's all, it's just, mm. it was really cool though. And um, I've just realized that, I don't know. I kind of want to do a bunch of things. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like. I'm still learning, I guess. But. Yeah, I, I listened to a little bit of that first one. Oh, you did, huh? Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, what do you think about that? I'm curious. Because um, some people are frowned upon making a bunch of new channels, but what do you think about me making new channels? I think it's important to pivot if you feel like it's time. Right. And even if it means finding a new audience at the end of the day, you got to do what's going to make you happy. Yeah. Because if you're not doing what makes you happy, then you're not going to be consistent yeah. and you're not going to be doing it for a long time. So as soon as you feel like something's not it, it's time to move on. Right. You know? So I think it's great. I think it's great starting from scratch, whatever, you know, and you'll find your new audience and for people that appreciated what you were doing before, right. They'll come along the journey. You know, I had people who, we're definitely longtime supporters of music and have followed me into gaming Oh, and that's cool. have continued supporting me. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny because music and gaming kind of have a lot of 
similarities. Right. You know, a lot of people who game love music. People who love music. It's usually gaming is kind of their downtime thing. So yeah, it it lives in a similar world almost. Mm -hmm. That's definitely that's that's for sure. Um, I just had it. I forgot. Oh yeah, you said oh, the. That, that's another thing I love, right? I'm not trying to just like, I don't know, just observing you and like what you got going. Like, I think the the podcast is called Saint Atlas, right? Yep. yep, that's dope. And like, I would love to do that, you know? Yeah. So I'm curious about that because I joined Film Club this semester, and we just barely created a short film. It was like 20 minutes mm. long, and then nice. In about two weeks, one of the people in that club asked me to be an actor for him. Never acted before. Mm. But I told him, sure, why not? Right. And it's like, would you ever do anything in the film industry if you could? Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I have a script for a short film. I've helped shoot a short film before. So we are more similar than I thought. That's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. I mean, and I, I'm a, I'm a huge film nerd. So that's part of the reason. And when I was also doing producing, producing for music, I would help shoot the music videos and stuff like that. So I've, I've shot my own music videos, maybe like over, eight to 10 of them, maybe. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's funny because in music, the position that I was in, I played a lot of the background, right? Mm -hmm. Making the music, engineering, DJing, not being the person. And then it wasn't until gaming where I put it all on me and you counted on me and I became the person. So it's definitely shifted my mindset to say like, okay, what, and what other things can I be the person like acting, right? Yeah. And being on camera and being, you know, whether it's the main role or side role, whatever, but, you know, being there yeah. with my face. And so I would definitely do it. I would definitely do it. I'd have to, of course, take up the right opportunity, but definitely. Right. I think it'd be sick. That's all. Like, I, I would enjoy one day being able to, like, have this podcast, maybe create a company one day, help screenwrite, help direct, you know what I mean? Just do a bunch of different mm -hmm. things. So that was probably loud in your ears, but yeah. No. Oh, cool, cool. But yeah. Um, I've, I've felt truthfully, and I was actually thinking about this today before we started, uh -huh. that when I started Atlas and doing the gaming stuff, I didn't see it necessarily as the end goal. I feel like I have a lot of passions and dreams and desires and I'm just looking for an opportunity to elevate my platform right? and like, continue yeah. growing and building an audience that will stick with me and will hear out my vision. And when I continue to do bigger things that they'll continue following me. And I've tried to make that a very open conversation that I do want to do gaming long-term, no matter what, you know, I love gaming, but uh -huh. I don't see it as the end of the road for me. Which is, that's that a good, sense. that's a good perspective. I, I, I like that. That's how I should look at things, I guess. Because I always thought about yeah. YouTube as like a way to elevate, right? And like create right. more possibilities. I guess social exactly. media following. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's cool. That's dope. Exactly. Yeah. And I have ideas to, you know, build. I, I, this year I've been shifting a little bit more into not only building my personality, but a brand through Atlas and being able to branch Definitely the wherever it goes. This is that's yeah. what I'm saying, dog. Just because like, I know I keep saying it, but like for four, you have 4,000 subs now, right? Yeah. 4,000 yep. for 4,000 subs. Like some of the things you got going on, maybe it's cause you've been producing like in the business, I guess for a while, but like some of the things you got going, you wouldn't know like you wouldn't have for 4,000, right? Like definitely mm. underrated because like the merch looks fire. You know what nice, I mean? I, I, yeah. And like your thumbnails are cool. Do you pay somebody to do those? I assume. Yes. Um, he actually just started getting paid. A month ago. <laughs> Dope. Dope. So he was uh, just a long time viewer for like eight months. And then I made him a mod. And then he started sending me stuff. And I was like, man, I didn't know you did graphics. And then it kind of just escalated from there, oh. which was always my hope. I wanted to build something within what I was doing. Right. Build with someone within, not just outsource and like, hey, can you make thumbnails for my channel? Someone that's from within the community and that is passionate. So yeah, God. now he's doing it for every video that is a good way to look at it you know what i mean i've never thought about it that way that's dope and i learned that from music too like i learned in music uh there wasn't really a great team structure when i was working in music mm -hmm. but i always knew that when i do my own thing man i need a team I, right. i'm not enough 
I don't have enough time. I don't have enough mental power or ability mm -hmm. and I need people to help me and people that see the journey and the vision and want to help me accomplish it. So I've always been big on like, you know, now it's, I think including my fiance, it's about five of us doing other little things within what we're trying to do. So that's beautiful. obviously only one of them being paid, but right. yeah. That's dope. I think it's important to, to have help from people that your, see what your vision. Right. Do you do your shorts? Like, do you edit all the videos? So up until a month ago, oh, so he's I, gave him all, I gave him all the editing. I gave him um, the channel to do all the posts, all the thumbnails. And um, yeah, so videos, shorts, editing, thumbnails, Damn. and modding on the streams. That's dope. There you go. Yeah. Slowly just kind of like, you know what I mean? Creating a, that's, that's sick. That's something I want one day. You know what I mean? Yeah. That mean? was my goal when I first started on the first day. I was like, that's where I want to get to. Yeah. So that it's, it's nice to be here. Takes yeah. pressure off, huh? You can be more present. That makes sense. I can be way more present. And what we were talking about earlier, as far as not paying attention to views and stuff, uh -huh. that helps me even more. Cause now I don't even need to open my social medias, which is dope. And I'm not even a social media person, really. So now I don't even have to look at it. I don't even, of course, at the end of the week, I monitor how videos are doing. And then, okay, this, we didn't have a good week here. Let's make some adjustments on what we should do moving forward. Right. But as far as daily, like checking, now I can't even have that habit because I don't have, I don't need to have that access. That's very good for mental health. So that, that's all, that's destroyed me in the past before. So that'd be perfect. Oh my, very good as an understatement. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> You know, it's detrimental, but yeah, yeah. it is. It yeah. is absolutely. That's wild though. Um, so with that, how do you stay so creative? I guess like, do you usually, I guess you have the streams, right? Have you ever thought of, and you got the podcast now, two different podcasts, but like, I, I don't see you make too many videos. You don't, right? You don't make too many videos. It's mostly streams. Yeah. Streams and shorts, streams, streams and, shorts. and short content. So TikTok, whatever, but short vertical content and streams. Have you ever wanted to make videos? Um, not that much. Interesting. Because um, recording offline doesn't give me the satisfaction that I'm looking for. Because the satisfaction for me is the community and the stream and us experiencing the game at the same time. Something happens in the game. I look over at chat. They're reacting. I, f I feel that like unified experience especially since i'm the youngest and growing up i'd always watch my brother play video games so i kind of have this thing with gaming that's it's, it's not just me i like to experience it with someone else so that's the satisfaction i get if i were to oh. record offline and then like have someone edit it or me edit it and upload it even if it does great it's not Wouldn't it's not appeasing that part of me that i'm looking to appease right damn that's that's cool I, I like would that. maybe like take the live streams and then have that edited, but mm -hmm. I need a lot of help with that because editing, you know, six to 10 minute videos pulled from a live stream. That's three hours is a lot of work. So, yeah, I don't know. I enjoy like I started a new channel called EXO and uh, I built the Great Pyramid of Minecraft and mm -hmm. like I did a little voiceover for it. I built it. I saw it, dude. I saw the first few minutes. Did you, it, I thought it was great, man. It's okay, right? No, yeah. I thought it was great. I, Thank you. Like I said, I think you have a good commentating voice and the quick edits and the idea mm -hmm. thing was great. I enjoy that. I, I hate, I kind of hate the editing part. But like I enjoy when it turns into that. Cause like I thought yeah. it looked pretty good and like flowed well. Yeah. And that, that's what yeah. I enjoy. Just like seeing that finished product, I guess. Mm -hmm. But like streaming's still fun, but there is something intriguing to me about creating a video. And like, mm -hmm. I noticed if, if, I posted a video when it, you've played Minecraft before. I assume everyone has. Absolutely. Did you hear about the warden? He came out. No, you didn't hear about him. He's a, he's a big mob. You literally he'll like two shot you with the best mm. armor in the game. Almost impossible to oh, kill. Wow. Yeah. Anyways. But, um, when, when he first dropped, I made a video about him. And if I would upload that on, on exotic, it would have got 30 views, but it was my first video on that new channel and it got 30,000. Right. Which makes no sense. There was like 10 subscribers on that channel that got 30K. But if I would have uploaded on Exotic, 
30 views. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, the whole social media game, including YouTube mm -hmm. is complicated, right? It's complicated. It's not as easy as it seems. The algorithm can be funny. I think as far as like the only through way that I see is like I said earlier, consistency, daily activity, and what's trending. What are people searching? And cool. you were on it that day, you know, with the new update, the new thing uh -huh. where everyone's searching up. So, right. Yeah. I don't know. That's, it's weird, man. Yeah. And I, I struggle with that too, because that's why I created a second channel for St. Atlas. Cause I was doing St. Atlas stuff on my main gaming channel, but I was like, I know the algorithm's not going to fuck with this. Right gaming and then commentary i have to separate things which i didn't want to because now it's creating another channel something else i have to go feed and pay attention to right but at the end of the day i think i realized youtube likes when you're organized yes and you're giving people what they're expecting to receive from your channel yeah that's, i don't that's why i can't i just can't do it like maybe if i stream like i miss talking to the community i miss just chatting streams but i don't miss playing the game with them like playing mm. with subscribers, if that makes sense. But I do miss just right. talking to the community. But um, yeah, I don't do that as much. Um, you don't play with subscribers. I try to do it like once every or twice every quarter, which is good. um, because you had mentioned at the beginning, and I wanted to go into it a little bit more. Okay. But that issue with with playing with subscribers, it's 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 the relationship between the creator and the and the fan, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. And I experienced it with music too, where it's like. You get these fans and then they're like constantly talking to you and in your DMs. And then as soon as you open that door and let them in, now it's like they think that you're friends and then the relationship dynamic changes. And now they don't support you as an entertainer. They support you as like a friend. So now it's like, I'll, you know, I'll give you the attention when I can. And if you're not giving me that attention, I'm not going to give it back anymore because I'm your friend. So Aaron, yeah. don't you want to play with me? And then it just becomes like diluted and strange. So I learned that from music and then going into gaming, I was like, I have to be careful with that. Because if every stream I'm letting everyone play, now the expectation is different. How they see me is different. It's a, it's a tough thing to balance, dude. Especially for people like who stream every day like me and have people come in the stream every day. I appreciate your support so much. Right. And I, and I genuinely, you know, for the relationships that I build within the community, care about you and stuff like that. But you got to know what this is. This is yeah. me trying to create entertainment for you and hoping that you'll support me through that. Which At the is, end of the day, that's it. Right. And that's, that's where I went wrong because there was a, a select group of people who were there from the beginning. And like mm -hmm. we built that off screen relationship, I guess, like we became friends you know, mm -hmm. and they were mods and they were there every stream. And then one day they just disappeared and stopped coming. And like that actually mm -hmm. started to affect me. Like when they left, it was it genuinely made me sad. And I didn't want to stream, mm -hmm. which isn't good. You know what I mean? I should have kept that dynamic that you were talking about, but that definitely discouraged me from streaming. And that, that was a downfall. Definitely. I don't blame you though. I don't yeah. blame you at all. It's like, I don't know. There's something about it. Like they were just like, Height. They were there every time, biggest supporters, and they were just gone. That just hurt me, I guess. Yeah, dude. Yeah, no, I, I can definitely understand that feeling. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, especially when you're doing something that you care about and that you're passionate about. And, you know, like, in, in my music and in gaming, mm -hmm. it means a lot to me. Like, it's what I really spend my mind and my heart and all my energy towards. And, yeah, those relationships can be tricky, right. very tricky. It's it's very complicated. Yeah. And when you feel like you lose someone's support, it's not just that they're not watching anymore. Now it's like you feel that they don't aren't a part of the dream or the vision anymore. They're you know it it just cuts a little deeper than it would anything else. Yeah. It's difficult, bro. You it's love difficult. it. This any entertainment industry is not for the faint-hearted. Right. You got to go through. Definitely a lot of cuts to learn how to deal with it. Get Which, some thick skin. I guess it's fair. Yeah. I don't know. And like, if, if some random troll on the internet, like told me to go kill myself or something, I'd laugh. You know what I mean? I really wouldn't mm -hmm. care at all. But like, if one of those viewers would have said something like that, it would hurt. Mm -hmm. Which is just so wild. You know what I mean? 
because like yeah. they're a part of it, I guess. And then they start talking, they turn into a hater. When I first started, even those random comments from random people like saying negative shit, oh, that affected me for sure. Really? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because I, I consider myself a pretty sensitive person, mm-hmm. and I knew that that would come eventually. And I knew even before it came, like, hey, when those things start happening, don't pay attention to it. It's just trolling. It's people trying to create a reaction or people who are hurt, who just want to hurt. Right. But even when it happened, it still fucked me up just because it's like, I'm just that kind of person. So it took me a little time. Even I think now uh-huh. I just knew that I had to go through it. Right. I had to get a few of those comments to just go, okay, process that emotion. And now... Now I'm I'm pretty good with it, no matter yeah, where it comes just, from. They just talk shit all the time, huh? That's all they do. Oh, God. I don't know. It makes me laugh. Like, I just enjoy going through a short just because it got a few views. You know what I mean? Just seeing the comments on it. Everyone's just dogging on me. It's like, okay. You know? <laughs> like, I literally didn't do yeah. anything to you, but if you want to talk yeah. shit, you can talk shit. But I guess. Yeah. Some, sometimes it affects me, but I don't know. Yeah, well. That makes you human, man. Right. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too hard on yourself. It, it is what it is. You just got to learn how to deal with it. Yeah. As, as we all are learning how to, in, in everything right. that we do, you know, mm-hmm. no matter fair. what walk of life you have, you're going to be getting some hate from somewhere. And it's just, but yeah, the world I feel we live like, in, I guess, especially yeah. on social media where yeah. people just can be whoever and say whatever. It's like kind of bad what it's doing to society as a whole tiktok i would agree dopamine yeah it's bad but we'll see (laughs) yeah we'll see it's only going to benefit us in january though because youtube is going to start monetizing shorts which is fine by me right let's go baby yeah i can't wait i can't wait very excited very excited hopefully it it's what it works out it works out no i was just gonna say hopefully it Hopefully the the percentage is is friendly. Hopefully, and then we get supported. Yeah, that one short you got got what a million views. Two million now. Two million, damn, that's that's good. Yeah, yeah. God of War wasn't it? God of War. Cool, that's dope. Yeah, and it's probably it probably became it's along the lines of that what you were saying. You enjoy reacting with people to the game. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think people enjoy watching someone else's reaction to a certain part mm-hmm. of something. So that's probably why, which is cool. You know what I mean? Cause you like yeah. kind of put that out that that's what you enjoy doing. And right. since you were doing what you enjoy, it got the most views. I think it's cool. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the goal. Right. That's the goal for sure. Yeah. I definitely don't feel like I, I, I try not to be a reaction content creator, uh-huh. but sometimes when you're making shorts, you know, you're looking for the best moment. It feels like that, but yeah. You, you you were definitely playing. It wasn't reacting. Yeah, yeah. Which people, you know, just viewing twenty seconds, come up with any opinion that they want. They think that it was pre-uploaded, or I played the game before, or I'm just watching. Like they don't get the whole idea. Which is why I have I love having the live stream on the same channel. Uh-huh. So anyone tries to say anything, check them real quick. I'm like go watch the live stream, man. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Put them this is place. authentic. This is me just playing and enjoying myself. Period. And they still talk shit. <laughs> like, I don't get it. You know what I mean? Fuck them. Right, exactly. That's all. That's Fuck all. Em. Have you seen Avatar yet? Seeing it this Friday. Oh, it's good. Yeah. You, like, you like the first one? I did. I remember seeing it um, in theaters with my mom first time. And like, it was just a visual masterpiece at that time. Yeah. Fucking blew my mind. I was like, dude, what is this CGI? This, these dudes look real. CGI in this one? 10 times better. It's kind That's of scary. Kind of scary how good it is. Very and long. it's all based yeah. around water, which is like one of the hardest things to do yeah. in CGI. It's so dope though. Very and like the, the, the plot structure is good. Like the, the, all the end scene, I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but it's just three hours long. It's a very good, very good movie. That's like I just looking forward to it. Right. Very excited about it. And I'm a big, like, I don't know what it is, but I'm a big, like water person. Mm-hmm. Like I like water. Like, for example, Wakanda Forever had Namor, which uh-huh. is like, you know, underwater, Atlantis. Right. I'm into that kind of thing. So looking that was forward dope. to it. Did you like that movie? Wakanda Forever? Yeah. 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 I enjoyed it a lot, actually. Did you I like it? twice. Twice, huh? I only yeah. saw it once. 
I love Siri as Black Panther. I thought that was her, her name's Siri, right? Yeah. Shuri? Shuri. God, I get it wrong every time. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I love her as Black Panther. She definitely did good, especially that end scene. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. I think that they definitely leaned into making making sure that she felt like it felt like that she deserved it. Mm-hmm. Right, going through her brother's death and her mourning, and then losing her mom. Like by the end of it, they were like, "Guys, yeah, we God gotta damn. give it to her." Like, who else are we gonna give it to? Right, <laughs> you know. She really went through the ringer in that movie, though, huh? It was a damn good character arc for sure. Exactly, which like, I think that they knew that they had to lean into because people mm-hmm. don't like when you just give something to someone for for whatever reason, you know? Yeah. And so I, I, they definitely gave her a great arc to she, make her she feel like she the deserved Black Panther. it. Yeah. She definitely exactly earned. well earned well earned that's cool um what do you think about the mcu in general um oversaturated right now mm-hmm. i'm a long time fan i've watched the first iron man in theaters Ooh. i cried in infinity war and game in the theaters like day one huge Anytime time I see fan. It obviously still, I still you cry. can see right we love you know marvel. i got the i got the avengers poster here got marvel encyclopedia comics long time fan yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dope. But yeah, a little oversaturated right now. Um, I think they wanted to experiment with TV shows and stuff like that, especially during COVID and mm-hmm. trying to find new ways to give people their content. And I think they'll probably thin it out moving forward and make it less. I hope so. We'll, yeah. we'll see. I just like, yeah. I know the Kong, you say Kong or Kang, do you know? Kang. Kang. Like, we'll see, I guess, with Quantumania. That's what it's called, right? Mm-hmm. we'll see how i feel about it then but as far as now like they really haven't done anything to hype me up or excite me to any level that Endgame did right mm-hmm. just i don't know why but i just don't care about the characters like i did the og ones like thor yeah. love and thunder i hated personally dr mm-hmm. strange multiverse thought it was okay but definitely not my favorite you know what i mean i, just, I would agree for the most part on both of those multiverse yeah. of madness it was all right you know like, okay, didn't, there was a few parts that I thought were kind of off and I wasn't too happy about necessarily. And then Thor Love and Thunder, I didn't hate. I kind of was just accepting of what it was. And right. Like a superhero, family, comedic film kind of thing, you know, very like, Taika Waititi. It didn't feel like filler though. Yeah. Like a whatever. Like right. a, I'm, yeah. I went for a casual viewing and I left and thought about it for 30 minutes and then moved on with my life. Which is, <laughs> which is not what I'm accustomed to getting from Marvel, right? Like uh, I'm, I'm accustomed to getting the big picture and being super invested in these characters. So yeah, I agree. It's definitely missing that stuff for sure. But which, I'm excited for Kang. I, Kang was who I was hoping they would base this new saga on. Oh, that's cool. Well, hey, before it started, good. I think they will. I think they will because he's a time traveler, and I love time travel. Oh, is so. he? I don't know anything about yeah. him. That's dope. You gotta watch the Loki TV show. I I made it. That's my thing, dog. I'm really bad at like finishing things. I guess. Like Mm. I I made it to season one, episode whatever, like two episodes before the end of Loki, and I just stopped watching. I don't know why I do that. You know what I mean? It makes no sense. I gotta stay for the fit, like the finale. But I don't know. No, but I actually don't disagree with you because I'm kind of like that. I'm kind of like that too with certain Uh things where it's like even if I'm towards the end, if. if I fall off, I fall off. Right. Like I'm not just gonna force myself to finish it just because. Like, yeah. If you lost my interest, you lost me. The only one I finished completely was Winter Soldier, not Winter Soldier, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Mm-hmm. Only one I finished all the way, which I thought it was okay. I wasn't too upset about that show, but I still need to watch. Maybe that. give. Give what? Maybe give Loki another try. Right. Maybe give Loki another try. Okay. That's the best one in my opinion. And it probably opens up the most doors, huh? the future of the mcu yes that's that's where kang appears at the end so he's that's the only show that really set a precedent for what's to come all the others kind of just had some like minor minor arcs but nothing like big vision so i've been talking my shit and i had no idea that kang already appeared that's too bad damn Uh, now i feel bad (laughs) because <laughs> he's already been there and another talking. run yeah I'll, I'll give it another run or, or maybe just watch the last episode mm-hmm. oh, that's fine he's just got, right just see enough. what's good no way home beautiful beautiful movie that's the only one i've liked so far on phase four really really i'm a huge obviously i'm a massive spider-man guy uh-huh. right yeah i was fucking everywhere 
Yeah. Um, I like No Way Home. I I cried for sure. Uh -huh. But I I felt a little bit too much of the. Uh, they wanted the three different Spider Man. Uh huh. And whatever reason to get there didn't matter. They just wanted the movie with the three, and I felt like it was missing that for me. Like a valid explanation as how we're getting here and why they're appearing and why we're having these moments. I felt like I felt like Peter wanting everyone's memory to be wiped so that they don't know he's him and then Doctor Strange just being like, okay, let me cast a spell and just wipe everyone's mind. Uh -huh. And then the portal, I just, I didn't feel like there was enough solid explanation to create the rest of the dark of the movie. That was my only thing. That, I, that makes sense, but just like seeing all three of them on the same screen of course, was enough of for course. me. Even if the and plot was I got, weird. And I got really fucking spoiled. Damn. Like six months early, I saw the green screen leaks of Andrew Garfield on set, and I, it ruined it for me. So I when the I movie came that. out, I was like, I knew what was going to happen. So mm -hmm. I, my whole experience, experience of that movie got fucked. Oh, and I'm still pretty uh, salty about it. Salty. <laughs> yeah, I'm salty. <laughs> Damn. Damn, that's, that, that is annoying. I remember being in the theater, though, and like as soon as Andrew Garfield came out, everyone's jumping and yelling and screaming, yeah. and Toby. It was a good vibe. It felt great being in that theater. It did. And just, I don't know, my, my favorite part of it was just, like, the plot was definitely weird, but, like, when, when Tom was going through his stuff, because Aunt May just died, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, the, the, the two boys were there to comfort him. Like, the mm -hmm. lines they were saying back and forth were like, that's what Uncle Ben said. And then the other one's like, mm -hmm. the day he died. Like, that gave me fucking cold Oof. chills. You know what I mean? Like that, that, that hit deep, but I don't Definitely. know. It was dope to see. And what I really hope they do, which they probably won't, but I would love it if Andrew Garfield got another movie and he was in the same universe as Venom and Morbius. I th think there's rumors that that's potentially going to happen. That'd be badass. We'll see because Sony's, Sony's annoying and won't just right? let things happen. <laughs> yeah. But we'll see. They got to always have some. I still need to play the games. <sighs> He's barely dropped on PC. Oof. I haven't touched him yet. I'll probably stream that. Maybe we'll see. But you're not a big single player game gamer. I, I am off stream. Never done it on stream. Ah, uh, uh, like Zelda. You're playing that, Zelda. Yeah, I'm actually playing Breath of the Wild for my second playthrough right now in preparation for Tears of the Kingdom. So excited next for year. Yeah. So excited. That yeah. that's like a game where I was like, ah, uh, I think, especially the second time playing it through, I just want to enjoy it mm -hmm. privately. Which is fair. Yeah, single. Single players can be tough to play on stream. Can be tough. I, yeah, I just felt like I was played. Uh, what was that new one that came out? Elden Ring. Yeah, that was the last one I played on stream. Like I just felt like I had to be like alive and exciting. Like I got, I could already tell the viewers were getting bored, and ugh, I don't know. Yeah, that's actually something. It's a great point that you bring up. That I think I've kind of tried to slowly reconstruct mm -hmm. since I first started streaming. Because I think when I first started streaming, I was obviously very excited and just full of natural adrenaline and dopamine just mm -hmm. getting on stream and experiencing that interaction for the first time right and i think now that i've been doing it for two years i'm a little more comfortable and that allows me to just be me right and me just being me i'm not like over the roof i'm a pretty calm chill person so I i've I've had to do that same thing where I know people aren't going to be seeing huge reactions or excitements because that's just not really my vibe anymore. Yeah. But I just got to be okay with it because they got to be okay with it. You know? That's fair. Like, if you want to go see someone bark at you, go watch Speed. You know? If you want to <laughs> see people doing backflips, go watch Kai. Like, that's just not me, man. I'm a fucking regular person playing video games. What do you want from me? Right. <laughs> That's okay. As, lo as long as, yeah, like, that's, I don't know. I think I've just struggled with my own identity on YouTube. Like, that's, I, I'm happy you have that, which is very admirable. Like, I've that's always cool. tried to be, I've tried to be Mr. Beast in videos. I've tried to be speed. Right. You know what I mean? It just never works. Never just me, which on the podcast, I'm being me now and I enjoy it a lot more thoroughly, I guess. So, if I did it on streams, maybe I'd like it more, but I don't know. I just built up an audience on Exotic that was like, Probably from the age range of like eight to fifteen, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like I couldn't exactly swear. I couldn't play older games because no one watched them. And like, I love the fans, right? Whoever's still around, like, there's probably fifty, hundred people still around. But I don't know. 
I just would prefer if I could be a little more aged up and just be myself. You know what I mean? Instead of catering Dude, to a younger audience. That's it. No more catering. Just, just you. That's it's it. That's I gotta just do, you. Huh? And if they don't like it, better off that they're not around anyways. You know? Yeah. And you're going to find, eventually, if you're consistent enough, people will, who like you and like your personality will just be attracted to that and they'll come along the journey. Right. Well, it's just the better way to move forward, you know? Because like, like we've been talking about, mm -hmm. it's just... You want to be yourself. Yeah. You don't, don't want to play that game. It gets exhausting. It, yeah, that's why I quit. <laughs> Which I don't know yeah. why the hell I did anyway. You know what I mean? Like, But it's, you're never really quitting, you know? You can always come restart back. or... Yeah, Which I did. Why not? I posted a video the other day. I said it's been a while. But I'm definitely not going right. to care about the numbers at all. Don't, don't even look at it. Anyone who is through the community, like we've had a lot of people start channels recently... Mm -hmm. In the last year since we've been doing this and that's one of my biggest advices is like post don't look at don't look at the results right as long as you're happy and you feel like you're delivering content that you're proud of and you're constantly trying to grow and improve that's it that's all that matters huh that's all that matters which is good it has to be the only thing that matters because or else you're just going to be stressed and anxious and depressed and living based off of the reactions that you're getting from the content that you're creating. God, that's beautiful. There's no joy in that. None. Absolutely none. Yeah. And like, I don't it's know. It's nice to get a, you know, round of applause. It's nice to get that stuff. But right. if you're that, if that's what you're doing it for, you're not going to make it very long. Right. I, I don't know. I've noticed the, the, the TikTok trap too. Like when, when I look at the stream numbers and they're down, it makes me sad. But when I look at the shorts numbers and they're through the roof, it like it's dopamine, like it's addicting. You know what I mean? Which is also a bad curse to get into if you're going for the numbers specifically. Double-edged sword. Yeah. I think if your focus is just, you want to grow. If, if it's staling out and nothing is happening, that's a problem. Uh -huh. Because in anything in life that you want to do, you want to see results. That part of it is okay. Right. But being tied to the results is not necessarily, I think, the right attitude. It's as long as you're seeing incremental, small steps being taken in the right direction, then that's all you can ask for. All that matters. You know? And especially, like, you mentioned earlier, you're going to the gym. Mm -hmm. That's another huge lesson that I learned, like... Three years ago, I lost like 40 pounds from yeah. working out. And that's going on a weight loss journey or like working out in general. It's a patient one. Mm -hmm. You have to be okay with every day. You're not going to see dramatic changes. It's going to take time. Right. And I feel like that was also a huge lesson in learning. Okay. One step at a time, little by little. Don't mm -hmm. look five days ahead. It's just today and the best right. that you can do now. And you just keep doing that every day. Eventually, you get to where you want to be. That's a good, that's a good mindset. I need to adopt that a little bit. I think you can, and you will. Dude. I will. I will adopt it. You will. Mm -hmm. Boom. Right. We'll Manifest. See. Manifest. You believe in that kind of stuff? Um, to an extent. I believe in. That's a good question. Right. Gotta go deep. I, I think, yeah, I think I believe in, um, I believe in the right mentality and, and that is what, it's a good question, dude. I, I think it's important to have the right mentality, be optimistic, know your goals and trying to put your best foot forward. I think that's it. I think, yeah, maybe manifest has like a deeper connotation to it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you speak things and life just gives it to you. I don't know if I believe in that extent. Yeah, that's a little, that's a little funny. But, but I think it's important to say and earn things. Like, I will do this. I can do this. I will be better. Because it, it retrains your mind on how to think. And if you're always thinking on ifs, buts, you'll always find an excuse. You'll always find a reason. You'll always, it's an endless list of reasons to not continue. That's you can't go down that path. That's yeah. It's uh, I agree. With if that. you look at any great person in history, mm -hmm. it's, it's all achievable. It really is. You just have to believe. 
an orc. Screw what everyone else thinks. Just you like have the, to believe that you're the best. Just like the Polar Express. <laughs> just like the Polar Express. Terrible joke, but yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. Just like the Polar yeah, Express. Yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's just you got to believe in yourself. Right. Period. How would, uh, that's a good one. I guess maybe for a TikTok clip, huh? How would we, how would we get there? You know what I mean? Like how, because I actively strive for that every day in my own personal life. Like that's how I want to live and try to be better every day and try to motivate myself and motivate others. But how would someone who's like down bad going through it, mm -hmm. no future, because I know a lot of people in my own life that are like that and I can't do anything about it. And that kind of affects me because I can't help them at all. Right. But how would they, they got to want it, obviously, you know, but if someone yeah. is going through something deep, how would they... I think it's I think it's the tiny the tiny things the, tiny the little things. steps. Mm -hmm. It's it's the decisions that you make in between the things that you're doing. So for example, the song that you choose to listen to when you start your day, thing that you say to yourself when you start your day, the the where do you go to when you start your day? Like, are you going to social media? Are you going to this? Are you going to that? It's the little decisions that you make every day. It's um. When, when I'm feeling down and sad, am I choosing to commit to that or am I making a decision to help me get out of that? Right. Am I going to choose a sad song that's going to almost satisfy me because I'm already feeling sad or am I going to try to put on a happy song to take myself out of that situation? Yeah. Am I going to keep, when it's time to go eat, am I going to make, am I going to eat that food that makes me feel like shit, it makes me feel drowsy and too much sugar, not good for me, kind of things like that. Am I, you know... Um, am I going to, when I go to my phone, am I going to open up the Instagram app and spend five hours on it? Or am I just going to, you know, go to a podcast or go to, uh, one of your favorite movies, rewatch it, something that's going to fulfill you, make you feel happy. It's those like those little things right. and definitely what you say to yourself. Cause this is, this is the shit, bro. Yeah. This is the game. The game you're playing is in here yeah, with yourself. Sure. Nobody else, period. End of story. No matter what situation you're in, it's, it's in here. I and if you can believe that. you can do it, and if you say that you can, you will. Right. What That's if, what I think. What if the people, like, what if, I don't know, I'm trying to think. You obviously got to want it, though, you know, at the end of the day. Of course. If you don't want it, course. it won't happen. But I think, although people think, I think most people want to be happy. And most people want the best for themselves, even if they don't see how to get there. And you got to have the right people around you. That's another thing. Yeah. Removing toxic people from your life, whatever's making your environment stressful and anxious. And you have to take that out. You know, for people that maybe live with their parents and they're kind of stuck in that, get out of your house, sure, go find a job, go find friends. Don't be in a place that makes you feel uncomfortable. Right. If maybe you have to go home to stream, okay, you're there to stream your game, and then, hey, mom and dad, I got to go I have a job, or I want to go spend time with friends, because this is not the place that makes me feel like I can do the things I want. Right. It's creating an environment that's healthy and optimistic and positive. I'm a huge energy person, too. That's... And people suck the... People can suck the life out of me easily. Yeah, me too. And yeah, really, like... Similar. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so, dude. Right? Yeah, I know, for real. That's so that too, being careful with noticing, like, I don't feel great around this person. I don't feel me. I, I, don't, I feel like I'm being something else or they're making me feel this. And those, those are your answers. Right. So do something about it. Are you going to keep letting those people be around you or are you going to make the decision to walk away? And those are the big decisions, but you don't get there until you make the small ones, which right. is recognizing, oh, this is not right. What should I do about it? Okay, these are my options. Now right. take action on those options. Which, that's a good way to put it. Because uh, this summer, actually, I quit McDonald's, and I still live at home. And I didn't have, I didn't have college going, and I just door dashed. I didn't have another job. And so mm -hmm. I, was, I quit Exotic at the same time, too. So I quit YouTube. I quit job. I had no school going. Literally just at home. And uh, that was the first time I've ever experienced severe anxiety and depression. Like I started mm -hmm. having panic attacks for the first time ever. And mm -hmm. um, it lasted for two months, like time what felt so slow. 
But ever since mm -hmm. college started again, I have a job now. I was also vaping. I finally quit nicotine like a week ago. Nice. And so I feel good doing that now. And I've been going to the nice. gym. And like when I was there four months ago, and I'm only 21, right? There's, it was no, no crazy problems, but to me, they felt pretty deep. And it's so like from there to here now, it's honestly wild how different my mentality is. But like now I feel almost like a, a drive and power that I'd never felt before that I can succeed and get to the places I want to. And I feel like that is achievable now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is and I think, very helpful. Yeah. And going through those little storms are incredibly valuable. Yeah. Because being depressed and anxious, like it teaches you a lot, even though it's fucking tough and you don't want to oh, be yeah, there. Yeah. Once you're on the other side, you realize how dark it was, how bad it really was, how deep and things really got for you. Right. And you learn, okay, shit, I don't want to be there again. Yeah. What decisions can I make to not be back there? Right. And you realize maybe the steps that brought you there in the first place and how to avoid them and not do that same thing again. Which is just so, life, huh? Just life. Yeah. But the storms, man, they're so valuable. Yeah. They're they're so valuable. Losing, failing are the greatest things that you can have happen to you in your life. It's as long so as you wild. stay with that mentality. Right. But it's so painful and just like so consuming. You know what I mean? But it ends up being the most valuable thing that ever happened to you almost. It's wild. Always. Oh, wild how life works. That's all I gotta say. I, I know I'm only 21 <laughs> and I'm still learning this kind of stuff. Oh, don't even don't even say that. Don't right. even say that. You you've you've experienced plenty of life and your battles are your battles, and everyone has their own to whatever measure. So, you know, I, mm -hmm. I don't think your age has anything to do with the things that you've gone through. I think that's just the point in your life and now you know, and you'll have more storms. Oh yeah. And you'll have more battles. And things could get dark again, but now no. hopefully you recognize you have the tools to get out of it. And I assume it gets easier, right? Like when those things come up. For sure. It gets easier with time and different times that go through Because now you know what it's like. Yeah. You've been there before. Like anything, like once you've done it multiple times, now it just becomes second nature. That eventually you go through enough storms that when another storm is coming up, you already know how to dodge it. Like, you don't even have to think about it. You just know almost subconsciously the decisions you have to take to avoid a storm. Does I make think sense? that makes sense. But I think sometimes you can get a little too far into your own head about that. And like, mm. you, you don't, you're so like, you know how to avoid the storm, I guess. But sometimes you don't even want to even attempt to approach the storm because of how badly it hurt last time, mm. if that makes sense. So it's mm. very easy to avoid failing again, whatever it is. Right. Yeah, that's just, very just, true. You just got to go with it, I think. Yeah. Being comfortable is, is also difficult. Yeah, that's, that's where you get. That's where you get bad, I guess. Yeah. I, I think, know. yeah. That, no, that's, that's, that's a great point. That, that's, that's tough. I think, if anything, maybe your focus just has to shift to being okay with or, or desiring evolution within yourself and whatever you're doing. Right. Because that'll, that'll already put you on a path where things will continuously get uncomfortable. And then you'll be comfortable within that dynamic. If that makes any sense. And you'll become comfortable with uncomfortable? Exactly. That's the trick. Because right. being uncomfortable brings you the best results. Because you're doing something that is new, is different, is, is stretching you. Is, you're creating opportunity for you to learn more. So if you can be comfortable in those uncomfortable environments, it's like thinking about Brady, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and the hardest situations at the end of the game where he has to do something crazy, he's not exactly uncomfortable, but now he's done it so many times, he's comfortable in the hectic environments. And he knows. He knows what to do, and he's comfortable in it. Maybe the first time he was fucking shit in his pants, yeah. scared, not believing that he could do it. And then you do it a few times, and you're like, okay, bring on the uncomfortable, because now I know how to thrive in it. And now he's a goat. Right. And now you're a goat. Which is cool. And like, I don't know. <laughs> you, got, you got to become uncomfortable, right? You have to. But some people don't want to. Which is... Fine. I don't think anyone wants to. Yeah. Kind of. But I, I know a lot of uh, stories, I guess, of people who just don't even care to become uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Don't care to 
experience new Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Yeah. No, there are people that are very close minded, uh -huh. very close minded. And there's a lot of people that haven't, I would say, you would come across that haven't even like developed that type of consciousness to like be anything more than who they are, right. you know, and see the future or see. Yeah, those people are difficult, but to, yeah. teach their own, teach their own. And, you know, you can't help everyone. Which. It's something I'm learning, I guess, with time that I can't, I don't know. Like, like you said, how you energy, I've noticed that if I give too much of my energy, it definitely takes me away. Mm -hmm. Right. And I gotta, I think it's a lifelong process, but I definitely need to become more content with not trying to help everybody and save everybody. If that makes sense. Yeah. I've had to monitor that actually with streaming a lot with getting on every day mm -hmm. is making sure that I'm giving people the energy that I feel like they did, that they deserve every stream. Right. And if you're streaming a lot and you're doing something like that, it can get exhausting and it can get tiring. And I feel like maybe some streams, I'm not giving them all the energy I can. So I have been trying to find ways to make sure I balance that. And I'm spending time at night doing things that are going to help me recover to bring my energy back up so that the next day I can try and give them more of that energy. Right. But that's, you know, that's the game of life, bro. It's, it's all, it's all one just big fucking game. Yeah. That's how I see it. <laughs> that's, and it's just learning how to do the side quests and learning what constantly. tools you need. Yeah. You fuck, you love it. You become main character. Yeah. It's wild. I gotta change this battery real quick. Sorry. No worries. You're good. It's, uh, it's kind of weird. I, I don't like using the... You probably have an actual stream cam, huh? Yeah, and I have a dummy battery, uh -huh. so I can plug it in, and it'll never die. Oh, damn. That's nice. You should get one of those. I, yeah, I should, because like, what you're seeing me through is the 1080p, probably 720, honestly, for you, but there's no way I'm recording a video with that, so I have to use this. But I can't hook this up mm. to the PC, so I just oh. use it, which is annoying. Why not? It just doesn't, it's not a big enough camera. It's a G7X. So it doesn't have a, I forgot the cable name for it. Whatever cable you use to hook into the PC. Micro USB to, I'm doing micro USB to, um, to USB. Do you have, is it a DSLR? It's a micro third. So it's a GH5S. Okay. But it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big body camera. Right. <laughs> this camera is smaller. So I need, I need to get the bigger camera first, but then I can. Which, which what, should be, outputs do, what outputs do you have on that camera? Do you have micro USB or HDMI or anything? Micro, as an HD, HDMI. If I plug the HDMI into the graphics card, will that work? Yeah, I have a, um, I forget what the fuck it's called. But yeah, I have like a, I have a graphics card and then I have a, the fucking USB thing where I plug it in and plug it into my computer. I forget. I'll send it to you after. Okay, for sure. Uh, maybe it'll work. I'll check that out because it'd be nice yeah. to, I guess, use it because I just always have to sync up this microphone audio with this. I like clap, you know what I mean? Which is kind of annoying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, he said, been I know. There, dude. He said, I know. Yeah. I've <laughs> been there. Right. Oh, when I first started setting up the stream, holy shit, dude. I would spend like 18 hours a day for like the first two weeks just trying to figure out all of this out. Like, this is un not synced with that and plugging this it's just it's <sighs> stressful. Yeah. That, that first, I, I kind of miss that though. Cause I, I would learn a lot intentionally. I would try yeah. to learn, which I enjoyed, which I still should be doing. But like when I first started, I was always watching videos about streaming and the gear and the setup and all that. Yeah. You know? Do you have a, do you have a go XLR? Sorry. No, no, no. Uh, I do not have a go XLR. No. Yeah. I bought one as soon as I stopped streaming, which makes no sense, but. The audio sounds good though, right? Yeah, it sounds great. For sure. Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. I I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. That's all. It should be. All right. Cool. What, what do you have? Cool. What's your mixer? Uh, I'm just doing the Scarlett USB. Oh, so it uh, has known. two microphone inputs going micro USB to my computer. Cool. I, I never used that one. I had a, I forgot what, I think it was like a $30 one until I got this GoXLR, but it works. I got this, this boom arm is so janky though. I need a new one. <laughs> Ugh. And on that radio show that, that like we did the podcast last time I did, they had like five different Shure SM7Bs. And I was so jealous. So that's Why a good can't you go there more often? I can. Um, 
it was for the class. And so the podcast was only audio, right? Did mm. they have a separate room where I could record that with people? But I would have to get another camera like this because I want to post it on YouTube too. Mm. I like the visual aspect of it. So I yeah. could, and it'd be more beneficial, I guess, with in real life people. But I think for now, I just want to interview, like I'm interviewing you now, like not interview, just like, you know what I mean? We're just kind of in a conversation, which is what I enjoy. And then I have another YouTube friend. And then I don't know about that. I don't know afterwards, but this is the kind of stuff I'd love to do. And like, I'd love to pick people's brains. I just don't know how to meet those people. You know what I mean? Like get them on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, the networking part is difficult. Yeah. And that's probably going to be the part that you don't like the most. Right. But to do what you love, you know, you got to sacrifice a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, I think I think this is a great thing for you, dude. And I think if you can just work on the net- networking and bring on different kinds of people. I don't know if you're looking to be, are you looking to just do within, like, the gaming scene? Or is it just anyone and anybody? Honestly, if I could, I'd be a Joe Rogan. Just, like, talk to literally anybody, right? It- yeah. I know you have to be niched, which is where I suck at everything because I'm just so, I love learning about anything, you know? Same. So like, I'll probably upload a clip from our Marvel discussion, the mental health discussion. You know what I mean? I don't care for a certain topic. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm the same way. I'm literally the same way. Niching is so fucking annoying because I'm not a niche kind of personality. Yeah. Yeah. I like my Marvel and shit, but I'm, I'm I like to say I'm a little more complex than just liking one thing. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why when I was doing, ah, that's when I was doing the streaming, if I didn't stream Fortnite, I wouldn't do good. I'm not trying to only play Fortnite, which is another thing. Right. We, we go back to that conversation about how you said, don't care about the numbers. Right. But that's my entire mentality was in order to grow on YouTube, you had to niche it up, which I'm not going to fucking do, honestly. You know what I mean? <laughs> Cause I yeah. can't, I can't do it, but yeah. You know, you, you, you made a comment earlier. I just got asked real quick. You made a comment about Brady. I don't watch anymore, but I still care about the Patriots, right? What do you think about him going to the Buccaneers? I know it was a while ago, but do you like that um, move for him? Yeah, I mean, I'm sad I wanted him to retire a Patriot. Exactly. But, but yeah, he's the GOAT, man. And he's whatever he felt like he needed to do, and I know that definitely that those are there were some broken relationships leaving the Pats with Bill Belichick and stuff like that. So I still root for him, still watch the games when I can. Of course, I have to pats her first for me because it's hometown kind of thing. But right. he believes that he can continue being great. So go, go be great. I just don't get why you'd switch up your legacy instead of just retiring. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I think they felt like it was the end for him. And he was like, excuse me, it's, I'm not fucking done yet. Ugh. You know, you know I mean? so either you let me keep going or I'm going to find somewhere else to keep going. And Which, that's what happened. It's fine, I guess. Right. And now, now we'll be Hall of Fame for two teams. Right. Or is it still just going to be one? Um, I think he'll go in as a Patriot, probably. Hopefully. Hopefully. But he, he definitely already. I guess you could have two Hall of Fame careers. I mean, he kind of has three Hall of Fame careers. What was the which his first few years when he had the first dynasty. And then 2010s when he had the second dynasty. Uh-huh. And now moving to the Bucks and winning Super Bowl and having the years that he's had, you could potentially make an argument for another third technically Hall of Fame career. God damn. No why? <laughs> it's fucking crazy. It is crazy, bro. <laughs> it is it is bad shit for sure. Like I, I can only imagine. It's not wild. Definitely. Yeah, I can't imagine being that great, but it's not <laughs> that's badass, so there, there's always that one, you know. On every sport, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Real quick. I know you got to go here in a sec, but I'm just trying to see what I had in my notes. I had a few notes written down just because I didn't know how this would go. But it's going well. I enjoyed it. Right? Great, man. I had a wonderful time. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. I think I had talked about all of it. One thing I do want to ask, though, off the notes, how do you stay consistent? Like, what's, what's the, the drive? Is there ever days you don't want to do anything? Absolutely. 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 Hell you yeah. Said, you said everyone has those days. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, if you're, if you don't, I don't know if you're human or you just fucking perfected it or you're lying to everyone. Right. Um, which a lot of people do, by the way. Like, that's why it's hard to, it's hard to 
learn that much from people over social media and stuff like that because you don't see everything right you don't know all the answers so you got to kind of figure it out on your own but um uh how do i find consistency was that your question or yeah uh routine routine making finding a routine. a routine right making a routine finding a routine that works for you that helps you consistently feel the same way every day you know mm -hmm. um whether it's filling your routine with whatever you know it depends on the person but routine routine um yeah that's that's basically it routine i would say and saying fuck the numbers yeah i, I know i said fuck the numbers a lot but you know, at the end of the day, if you want to grow and you want to make something full time, you have to treat it like a business. Yeah. Right. Because if, if it's not going to make money, then you're not going to do it for a long time because this world, you know, it's a capitalist government. So if you're not making money, you're going to be homeless. <laughs> right. Right. That so, funny, but yeah, of course, there's a portion of it where you have to look at the numbers because you have to make sure that you're growing. But right. as far as daily and monitoring it like that and getting sucked in you can't look at it like that yeah you know yeah. um you know maybe not look at it every day look at it once a week just to monitor and find out how to move forward but yeah right yeah. you got to find ways to protect yourself and no matter like what kind of industry you're in there's certain things like looking at numbers and reactions and reading comments that are going to affect your routine and are going to yeah. affect your consistency and if it's going to affect your consistency, then fuck it and get it away from you. Exactly. God, that's good. Get it away, dude. That's good. It's toxic and garbage. How long, when did you learn that? I'm just curious. Like, what was your evolution? I know we got to go here in a sec. What was your path, like, to get to that point in time? That's like, a fantastic question. You know what I mean? Just because, like, I'm 21. I like asking people who are older than me this question. Just because like, I kind of find, find it hard. Because I see the future when, I'm, I, when I won't have these problems, but getting to that mindset how long did that take you i, I would got, say when i first learned it was when i left massachusetts uh -huh. and i moved to atlanta with the friend that i was doing music with uh -huh. and i just got to be in my own apartment come up with my own rules my own wants uh you know i was there on a mission to pursue music so that um i was really on the grind and through that process, just learned being alone and being away from family and stuff like that, I think is a great opportunity to find yourself and find what works for you, what you like, what you don't like. Because sometimes that's the problem. You don't know what you like. You don't know what you don't like. You're right. just used to everything and you become comfortable in everything. And until Which, you detach yeah. yourself, you're like, oh shit, like. I thought I liked this, but I only like this because I'm used to it and I got comfortable with it. But actually, mm -hmm. it really fucks up my mentality and it's affecting me in this way. So then you start realizing that. That's why I said traveling for you and going to Africa was so great because you. you get to remove yourself and go, oh shit, now let me look at my life in a, in a new perspective. Which and you yeah. got to detach sometimes. I think that's a move. And like, I know I went to the same, I'm going to the same school that my hometown is in, right? I got a year left and I know I don't want to be here forever. I know I shouldn't do that. I don't want to turn to that person, but I don't know where I want to go. And the idea of leaving is definitely scary. And I don't know how or what I want to do exactly, but I'm sure I'll figure it out, you know? And it might be the best for me to do what you did. Like when you moved from Massachusetts to Atlanta, right? Yep. I just don't know where I'd go for that, but I know it'll happen at some point in time. Definitely kind of fearing it a little bit, but have to do it when it happens right when the time is right that makes sense yeah i mean you know life is difficult and circumstances it's not available to everyone to just move and you know yeah. reloc relocate your life but if you can somehow create that same experience i think that's valuable as well whether it's maybe just traveling every few months or it's um moving out of a certain space um, you know, finding a new friend group, just something to create a new experience for yourself. That's, I think is very refreshing and gives you a new perspective. That's what I've done this semester. I think I've like made more friends. I have a lot of, uh, there's a lot of transfer students from China here. 
and they barely speak English, but I hang out with them once a week. We just talk. Nice. Really opens my eyes culturally, which I enjoy. And so that's made this town a little bit easier. You know what I mean? Because I'm getting mm-hmm. those kinds of experiences here, something new. But mm-hmm. I definitely would. If I could, I would. That'd be a dream. A podcast and like maybe going to a different country once a week. Maybe make, like making that a series or something. I'd be so down to do that. I just need the money first, right? But I'd, I'd love yeah. to travel. I'd love to but, travel. But, you know, that's possible. You could spend the next six months saving and then this summer do a little tour where you bounce around to different cities and podcast people. That'd like, be so dope. that's really not that crazy of an idea. Like, that's completely achievable and possible. You just got to be determined to get it done. Which is, I need to get, I need to get on that, which I will. But you will. I will. You can. He said you will. You're gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. There's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts, huh? It's gonna happen. Just, that's for your own benefit. Right. That's what you got to do. Yeah. Say that. Can. I will. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. It will happen. It period. will happen. I've been getting, I've been getting better at that. The, the, the self limiting beliefs have been lifting a little bit, which is very good. For a long time, they were there, but. I just don't know the trajectory, I guess. I know the day-to-day, but I don't know the long-term. So I'm still figuring it out. But what you want to do today is you want a podcast. Right. You, you know that you like doing video and entertaining somehow. You like conversation. Mm-hmm. So go off of that. That's it. That's all you need. And just create a snowball. Just keep That's, going. That'll be the move. We'll see how it works out. Right. But I don't know. It just I appreciate it. That's all. You're welcome, brother. I think I'm just going on tangents here, but no, nah, it's all right. It's enjoyable, right? Maybe one day when I actually have a set, you can come on again because this was fun. When you have stuff. a set, I'll be there. Matt, chilling with Dylan. You like that name? Yeah, sure. I said, yeah, it works, right? Yeah, cool, cool. I think oh. names, you know, uh-huh. sometimes the names can really do it, but if the content's there and the personality is there, and it's good. Fuck about the name. Yeah, yeah. And, and don't be close to not changing it, you know? Like, maybe if something better comes along the way, you're re-inspired, new logo, something, all right? Then you shift. Right. Which will happen, maybe. I, I assume it will, as all things do, right? But we'll see. Truth. What podcast do you listen to? Last question, last one, I'll let you go. Um, I don't really listen that much anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, when I did, I listened to a lot of Joe. Because like I loved his guests, man. Just like, it's just so diverse. Exactly. And so many different people, different walks of life and different levels of intelligence and ideas. And so I like that. Right. Um, that was probably the only one that I listened to consistently. There was like a movie one, TV show review one that I did. But um, yeah, I loved it at the time because podcasts really inspired me a lot. And especially in times when I was dealing with a lot of isolation and loneliness, it was nice to hear other people talk and learn from them when I wasn't having those own, my own opportunities of doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, not so much anymore. I've kind of found different ways to, to fuel myself. If that makes sense. That makes sense. I also just realized something. What's your, what's your real name? If you don't, you don't want to say it, if you don't, you don't have to. Off you know, record? Off record. I'll, I'll take it out if you want. I'm just Andy. curious. Andy? Cool. Cool. Yeah. I, I never even knew that, which you probably don't want people to know that, right? Um, it's not that I don't want people. I just choose to not tell them. That's fair. That makes sense. That's cool. Yeah. Because, um, uh, yeah, I mean, when I first started, I wanted a name, and my fiance was the one that came up with Atlas. And it's a good name. Turn into the persona. Cool. I'm going to write Thanks, that down man. real quick to take that out. Do you like space? You can, you can keep it in. It's at the end of the video. If okay. they stayed long enough, they deserve it. They, they probably, yeah, we'll see. Exactly, huh? For sure. That's cool. Leave it. Do you like space? I know I'm just kind of talking. Yeah. But <laughs> Yeah, I, it's, it's not really so much about space. Uh-huh. That I do love space, but it's mostly the concept of just uh, how big the world is and how the mystery mm-hmm. of, of space and the uh how grand this life and this experience is that anything is possible right to go to any heights that you can dream of that's that's a good message right that's uh that's good that's 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 a good uh business what what do they call it brand statement yeah that's good it's good branding 
right? Thanks, but it's, it's also cool. Like, I, I'd love to build that. I would love to, to rebrand and, like, have maybe, like, on Sunday, I just talk with the homies, you know what I mean? Talk with the chat, try to get people to... I would very much enjoy being a motivational speaker, too. Like, not mm. necessarily, like, standing up on stage, but providing worthwhile advice and, like, trying to help people. You Do know it. what I mean? Because, like, I think that makes everyone happy, right? Absolutely. Like, yeah, because you're fueling people. Mm -hmm. People want to be fueled. People are looking for inspiration. People... A lot of people lack inspiration and they don't know how to find it, which is, and they're looking for it. Right. You know? So, yeah, I would love that because I'd love to leave a legacy. That makes sense. I know you, you probably want to too. Right. Yeah. I, sometimes I think about it when, when I'm in my prideful moments, I think about legacy and I think about what I'll leave behind. Uh huh. But then when I really go into deep thought, I'm like, but it, it, at the end of the day, like, I don't know if it really matters. You know, if at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, I don't know. I don't know if I care that much about it. I care if my life produces that, then great. But I don't think I'm after greatness necessarily in the terms of okay. wanting to be the best ever or be right. remembered. I think I'm just, just want to do what makes me happy. And if that leads to, legacy then so be it that's a good perspective i think and maybe i could change the way i look at that but i think legacy is a way to just give it i, I just want more meaning out of it you know what i mean like I no people, for sure yeah i want people to like feel something inspire people help people from what i do you know yeah yeah no definitely you want to make an impact mm -hmm. but yes. i think that's a fruit of what you already want to do mm -hmm. and that will come from what you're passionate about you know, Messi is the greatest player in the world right now, and his legacy is cemented forever, but it just started from him loving the game. Right. And then playing as a kid, and then the next game, and then you go to this team, and you win championships, and then the legacy comes from what you've done. Exactly. You know, you don't necessarily, you can chase legacy, but it comes from the day-to-day -day things that we talked about. Yeah. It's just, today, I love soccer, so I'm going to go play and be the best that I can. Right. And the legacy will come. That's, that's a better way to put it, I think. I like that. I like that view. I'm, I'm definitely going to keep some of this in mind. So th thank Good you. Man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. You got to go stream here in a sec, huh? I do. For sure. I'll hop in. I appreciate coming on. I'll probably have this up in a week, potentially. Cool, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to upload it. This is a good one. Good. All right. Do the podcast. Do the rebranding if you want it. Okay. You can do it. You thank got you. this. I got it. I got it. I, I will. We'll do it. Oh, by the way, you passed me in subs on Exotic. So, <laughs> that's good. Just Thanks, put that man. out there. You're welcome. Thanks, All right, man. Doug. Appreciate you. Good one. Appreciate you, man. Thank we'll you. We'll see you. All right, peace.